Hey, what's good, guys? Uh, today we're going to talk about CFA level 2 quants. Um, so we're going to talk about in terms of dependent and independent variables, right? Because well, so at the end of the day, when you talk about um, CFA level 2, what you're trying to do is uh, you're trying to do uh, valuation of a stock, right? Now, how are we going to go and do a valuation of a stock? Uh, the simplest form is by looking at two variables. Uh, one is the dependent variable, right? And the other one is taking a look at the de independent variable. Now, for example, when you talk about dependent variable, it's if you ask the question in terms of how does the interest rates going to affect stock prices, right? So in this situation, uh, the interest rates, second. Uh, so in this situation, uh, the interest rates, is going to be the independent variable, right? And the stock prices is going to be the dependent variable, right? So which means that uh, if the interest rates, how does the interest rates are going to affect stock prices? So maybe if the interest rates are low, uh, and people are not able to find enough value in interest rates or savings accounts or bonds and so on, uh, then probably, you know what, with interest rates, it's going to have a positive effect of stock prices. Now, this is just an assumption that we are making. So, of course, we have to do valuations, uh, do a regression analysis to see how it actually affects or does it even affect. Or the other way that you can take a look at it is uh, same thing if you want to try to say, hey, you know what, uh, let's say, how do we want to go and take a look at uh, interest rates now interest rates right now interest rates how would how the consumption habits so maybe you know what uh, you want to take a look at the economy and see how the consumption habits of a particular country is going to affect interest rates so in this situation the interest rate is going to become uh, the dependent variable and consumption habits going to become an independent variable, right? So that's the concept of dependent and independent variables. Uh, simply speaking, when you talk about uh, quants, uh, when you talk about y and x, uh, when you do a simple graph, what we really do is uh, when you draw a graph, right? Uh, any graph that we draw, when you talk about x-axis and y-axis, x-axis we consider as the independent and y-axis we consider it as a dependent variable All right so when you're trying to find linear regression linear regression means there is going to be uh, two variables one is an independent and one is a dependent variable so what you're trying to find is is there a relation between the two if there is a relation between the two uh, then yes, we can go and predict what the stock prices can be or we can go and predict what the interest rates are going to be. But there has to be some kind of uh, relation between them, right? It doesn't mean that this is an effect. Uh, what you're trying to simply try to find is, is there a relation? Uh, the other concept that I want to talk about is in terms of uh, regression analysis, right? So there is talk about regression analysis. Uh, there's cross-sectional that you can do. So cross-sectional talks about uh, numerous observations of X and Y for the same time period, right? So say, for example, you know what? Uh, you're looking at, if you want to do a valuation of a stock, uh, let's say you want to do a valuation of a stock between January 2019 to June 2019, right? Uh, what you're trying to observe is going to be in terms of the daily stock prices, right? So maybe uh, on January 1st, what is the stock price and what the interest rates are? On January 2nd, the stock price and what the interest rates are and so on. Uh, so that was going to give you a big, better understanding of during the specific time period between January and June, uh, what is going to be the valuation of a stock. Now, the other way that you can really do it is in terms of time series. Uh, so in time series, you're looking at many observations from different time periods, right? So for example, uh, if you're trying to observe between January 2009 to January 2019, uh, there's going to be various uh, stock prices so you take a look at the monthly stock prices and the monthly consumer demand and take a look at you know what how is does that affect right so basically what you're trying to do is uh, when you try to do valuation uh, as I mentioned there's gonna be an x-axis there's gonna be a y-axis so y is the independent and y is gonna be a dependent 
So what you're trying to do is every, uh, if you try to do, let's say, you try to do the cross sectional, right? Uh, what you're trying to do is you have an X value. So let's say X value is one. So maybe Y value is three. Maybe the X value is two, Y value is four and so on, right? So you will have different plots in a, in a chart, right? So what really the, the line of best fit is, is the line that you can draw in such a way that you know what is going to touch at least most of those parameters, right? So when you take the difference between what is the, uh, the dependent and what is the, is the predicted variable, if you square it, you can get a line of best fit. So the reason we really square it is uh, at times this can be a negative number, right? I mean, uh, the numbers, I mean, this can be a number, this can be a number, and the difference between the two uh, could be a different one, right? So that's the line of best fit. Uh, so that's it in terms of talking about dependent and independent variables for CFA level two quants. Have a good one.